Hi, this is John Linneball from John Linneball Tutoring, and this is Barron's Chapter 6R, Functions and Their Graphs. And here is my contact info. Don't worry, it's also at the end, and you should be able to find it on my YouTube channel. Disclaimer, I have nothing to do with Barron's or the SAT. I don't work for Barron's, and I don't make money if Barron's sells more books. I don't own the trademark to Barron's. They do Barron's Educational, whatever they're called. The SAT, of course, that trademark is owned by the College Board, that copyright, whatever it might be. I believe that all I've done here is legal under U.S. copyright or trademark or any applicable law, intellectual property law, especially the fair use exception for scholarship, criticism, and commentary. I really like Barron's books. Definitely buy them if you're preparing for a test. And really, I don't work for them. I don't make money selling Barron's books. Just trust me, they're good books, especially the SAT. You won't get the best results if you don't read the chapters in the Barron's book. Don't just rely on these videos. One of the main reasons is they do cover some concepts in the examples and inside the chapter that they don't necessarily put in the exercises at the end of the chapter. They do with most of them, but they don't do it with all. So it's a good idea. Spend a little money, go to the public library, whatever, and actually look at the Barron's SAT book. Questions 1 through 4, page 678, f of x equals the square root of x. All right, so we can see this is f of x equals the square root of x. So it starts at 0, goes out here. reason it can't go back here is because on the SAT, functions, unless they tell you otherwise, are always dealing with real numbers. Square root of any negative number is, of course, imaginary. So, questions 1 through 4, page 678 continued. So, which of the graphs is the graph of y equals f of x minus 3? Well, all right, if we're taking f of x minus 3, then what we're doing here is, okay, this is f of 0. So then, all right, so now f of 0 would be f of minus 3. Well, we know that doesn't exist. Oh, okay, so to even get here, we have to start at positive 3, because 3 minus 3 is 0. And hey, notice that this looks the same as this. So there's your answer. The y value now becomes the value of x minus 3. So f of 3 minus 3 is f of 0. It doesn't do anything to make the graph move up or down. So the answer has to be choice A, because we can see two of these move up and down. And this one goes over here, which we know is not going to work. This would actually be f of x plus 3, which we'll be dealing with in a second. OK, so what if we want to move the graph up or down? That would be best done by adding or subtracting from the f of x, also known as y, not subtracting from x and applying the function. What do I mean by that is, OK, don't put the plus or the minus inside the function sign where you're applying the f to x minus 3. You take f of x, and then you add 3, or you subtract 3, or whatever constant. That makes the graph move up and down. So questions 1 through 4 continued further. What is the domain of the function y equals f of x minus 3? Well, the domain is the set of all the possible x values of the function. So on the SAT, we're looking for real values. Since the square root of a negative number is imaginary, not real, we can't have any numbers in the domain that will give us a value of x minus 3 that's negative. Therefore, x has to be greater than or equal to 3. 3 minus 3 is 0. We know the square root of 0 is just 0. So the answer is D, all real numbers greater than or equal to 3. So which of the graphs is greater than, I'm sorry, I'll try that again. Which of the graphs is the graph of y equals f of x plus 3 plus 3? OK, so basically f of x plus 3, well, we know it's got to be f of x plus 3. So it's going to be moving it backwards like this. But since we're adding 3, we know it's going to move up 3. So it's got to be d, because it looks like this one, which is good. It's f of x plus 3. But it's also you're adding 3 at the end, so you're moving everything up by 3. So it has to be d. OK, so da, 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 there's, you know, there was also no f of minus 3 for the original function square root of x. Since the square root of negative 3 is imaginary, you know, it would be i times square root of 3. And it's up 3, so it's d. All right, 4. If g of x equals f of f of x, well, remember, f of x is just x squared. What's g of 4? All right, so all you do with something like this, I know this looks scary, just work from the inside out. So just take f of x. Just break it up to one piece at a time. f of x, square root. Hey, it's 4. That's easy. Square root of 4 is 2. Anybody knows that, right? So then you have 2, and you have to take the square root of 2. 
don't panic. They're not likely to ask you to evaluate this. Maybe they would on the calculator section. Definitely not on the no calculator. So they're going to have the answers in terms of just root 2, square root of 2. So square root of 2 is the square root of 2. Pretty easy, right? So the answer is C. Number 5, if f of x equals square root, not square root, sorry, absolute value of x minus 1, for what value does f of x minus 2 equal f of x plus 2? Well, all right, so let's pl plug these in. Substitute in x minus 3, well, I'm sorry, x minus 2, we're going to substitute that for x in the function. So what we do is we have x minus 2 minus 1, so that becomes x minus 3. We have x plus 2 minus 1. Okay, obviously that just becomes x plus 1. So absolute value of x minus 3 is equal to absolute value of x plus 1. Most likely, just from common sense and experience, x minus 3 is probably a negative number that when you take the absolute value, it's the same as positive x plus 1. So the easiest thing to do is just substitute in values, however. So negative 1, that's the first answer choice. Negative 1 minus 3 is negative 4. Negative 1 plus 1 is 0. So absolute value of negative 4 is definitely not equal to 0. 4 doesn't equal 0, so it doesn't work. 0, well, that gives us 0 minus 3, 0 plus 1. Okay, so obviously the absolute value of negative 3 is 3. Not equal to 1, not going to work. You don't really have to go through all these steps. Once you realize it's not going to work, just skip to the next question on the real SAT. So, 1, that gives us negative 2 and 2. 1 minus 3 is negative 2. 1 plus 1 is 2. So, hey, absolute value of negative 2 is 2 equals 2. Hey, same absolute value, so yes. D, they say no value of x. Well, since we just showed that there's at least one value of x that works, then D cannot possibly be true. So the answer choice is C. All right, let's move down. Question 6 and 7, page 679. If f of x equals 4 to the x minus x to the 4, what is the value of f of 2 plus f of 4? So when we're taking the value of a function, we just plug in the value. We have f of 2. So we see f of 2. We just put in the 2 for x. And then we put in the 2 everywhere we see x on the other side of the equation. So here we're going to have 4 squared minus 2 to the 4. 4 squared is 16. 2 to the 4th is 16. That's equal to 0. 4, okay, when you take f of 4, same thing. f of 4 is equal to 4 to the 4th minus 4 to the 4th. Do I even have to evaluate 4 to the 4th? I do not, because it's just 4 to the 4th minus itself, which is going to be 0 no matter what the result is. In case you're interested, one quick way to do it is know that 4 equals 2 squared. So then that would be 2 squared to the 4th, which is 2 to the 8th, which is 256. But you don't have to do that. So anyway. Then you end up with 0 plus 0 is equal to 0, which is the same as 0 minus 0. So nothing from nothing leaves nothing, as Billy Preston would sing and has sung. 7. What is the smallest integer that is not in the domain of square root of pi minus x? Well, a value isn't in the domain of a function in SAT land when it's 1 going to give you the square root of a negative number, or 2 if it's going to make you divide by 0. That's because functions are always in the real numbers on the SAT, and the square root of a negative number is imaginary. So the smallest integer that gives you a negative when you subtract it from pi is going to be 4, because of course we know pi is roughly 3.14, so the next bigger integer is going to be 4. And when you subtract 4 from pi, you will get a negative decimal or fraction and you can't take the square root of that in SAT land. Questions 8 and 9, page 679. Questions 8 and 9 concern the function f of x equals 8 minus 2x squared. So how many integers satisfy the condition that f of x is positive? Well, we know that 1 squared is 1, 2 squared is 4, 3 squared is 9. So 8 minus 2 times 1, that would be where x is 1, equals 6. That's positive. 8 minus 2 times 4, remember 4 is 2 squared, that's going to be 8 minus 8, that's 0. It's not positive or negative, so that does not satisfy the condition, that is positive. 8 minus 2 times 9, remember 3 squared is 9, that's 8 minus 18, that's negative 10. That also works out for negative 1, though, because 2 times negative 1 squared is going to just be 2 times 1, which is 2, so f of negative 1 is equal to 6, so there are three such integers. How many integers are in the range of f of x. This is a trick question. 
Nowhere does it say that the domain is only integers, so don't mistake number for integer. So any real numbers in the domain, that's how it is in SAT land. So 8 minus 0 is 8, as we saw before. Um, 8 minus 1 is 7. Okay, so there's got to be some value where you know, if f of a, or I'm sorry, if x is 1 over square root of 2, which is the same as 2 over square root of 2, remember your math teacher probably told you to rationalize the denominator. You square that, so you're going to end up with 1 half, multiply that by 2, you get 1. 8 minus 2, okay, the x value is just 1. We've already seen that in the previous question, 8. 8 minus 3, the x value has to be root 3 over root 2. You square it, you get 3 halves. Multiply it by 2, you get 3, and so on. So you don't have to evaluate all the x values. That's not what they're asking for. You just have to recognize that there are eight re real values in the domain that would give you eight positive integers in the range. So 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. All right, trick question. Not really a trick question. Technically, the SAT is saying, no, 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 this is all standard math, but it is trick E. Question 10, page 679. If f of x equals x plus 5, for what value does f of 4x equal f of x plus 4? All right, so we have to substitute in 4x for... You know, 4x in place of, if I say 4x, 4x, sounds like a tongue twister and it's hard to understand. Anyway, take 4x, put it in here. So now we have 4x plus 5. x plus 4, we have x plus 4 plus 5. So, okay, 4x plus 5 is going to be equal to x plus 5 plus 4, which is x plus 9. So we end up with x, 4x plus 5 equals x plus 9. Combining the like terms, we find that 3x equals 4, so x is equal to 4 over 3. You can grid that in, or I think that was a multiple choice question. Anyway, either way, there's your answer, and we're done. Thanks for hanging in there and listening to me. Did you find this video useful? Ooh, I got a little overlap here. Oh, well. Please like it and subscribe to this channel. Neither action costs you anything. You'll be alerted about my new videos. Why do I care? Well, it's simple. YouTube does not let me share any ad revenue until I have 1,000 subscribers and 4,000 hours. That's 240,000 minutes of view time in a year. So if you saw an ad on my channel or during, before, whatever, know that I did not get any of that ad revenue, but you can help me get some, and it doesn't cost you anything. I don't have anywhere near a thousand subscribers. I think I have a 662, something like that right now. But anyway, you can subscribe and help me get that much closer. So for the same reasons, you're not only welcome, but encouraged to share links to this video, put it in playlists, etc. I'm always happy to read and respond to constructive criticism or suggestions for new videos. I reserve the right to delete comments from and block those who specialize in destructive criticism. People you might call trolls or things that are off topic, you know, spammers, disturb people, whatever. If you want to contact me, you can always call me on my cell phone, 415-623-4251. You can text me at the same number. My email is john at com. My mail is 1859 Powell Street, San Francisco, California, 94133. Thanks for watching. Hope you are having an awesome day.